from Riley. I've been reading multiple stories and articles about dogs accidentally drinking antifreeze. Is this a rare thing or do you see it often? I read that there is an antidote. Just wondering if you carry said antidote on site or if it's something that's not easily accessible. Thank you for your time. Antifreeze. Fortunately, in Vancouver, we don't see a lot of antifreeze cases. We still, from time to time, see it. I used to work in Prince George and it was a fairly regular thing. That regular, I shouldn't say, because it still wasn't very common. I'd say it's uncommon down here, but the problem with antifreeze is it has a sweet flavor, but it's very toxic to the kidneys. Ultimately, it affects the nervous system initially, and then uh, and then just trashes their kidneys. And it's irreversible damage to the kidneys. It's quite often fatal. So we don't see it often. When we do see it, it's a really quick medical emergency. You need to try to get on it as quick as possible. We have the spot test in the hospital to test for it. There is an antidote. The problem with carrying that antidote, if you're not in a place that sees a lot of antifreeze, it's an expensive antidote, the actual specific medical one. So we, last I checked, we don't stock it on a regular basis. But and now we have hemodialysis at our hospital too and, and ultra filtration. Good old vodka, IV, alcohol, high percentage alcohol alcohol is an antidote for it. It competes with the ethylene glycol for the enzyme that metabolizes it. And it should be under, definitely under uh, veterinary supervision that it's done. It's an antidote. My first few years I was working in rural New Mexico and it was a regular thing. It's like the desert there. So people can drive around really old cars, but there's a lot of radiator problems and everyone's always working on their cars. You know how it is. <laughs> so we would see a lot of antifreeze intoxications and we carried the antidote. And I remember a few where if they were brought in early enough, like right away, right. we were able yeah. to treat them as outpatients with fomepazole. But I do remember one that I saw where I was actually in surgery when they called, but I spoke to them and I told them, come right away. This is an emergency. And they were maybe 45 minutes away. So I wrapped up my surgery and I got to like the one hour point and I called them to see where they were. And I had made it very clear, like this is time sensitive. You have to leave right now. And I called them and they hadn't even left yet. Yeah. So it's by the time, too. yeah. By the time you want to get them there. when they're acting drunk still. Um, yeah. And that's what they do. They, they act actually drunk and uncoordinated and falling over. Um, you want to get them, well, preferably as soon as they ingest as the, as the you, product. As but as definitely when they're still showing the kind of neurologic signs, you got to get on them and treat them right away. And we can save them. But we'd, we'd still go for these options first. Um, yeah, uh, like for me, oh. if, if I had one come in here. So I actually do stock fomepazole. Um, it is... Okay. Yeah, I do. I get it from Arizona uh, Compounding Pharmacy there. But um, yeah, it's crazy expensive. It's like $1,000 a vial. But that's all I ever had in New Mexico because my boss had been seeing them for so long that he mm. didn't like using ethanol as an antidote because... Um, he didn't feel that the outcomes were as good. And also they were really hard to assess because you're basically keeping them so drunk um, yeah. that they're hard to assess. And some of their metabolic parameters are kind of deranged when they're that intoxicated. So he always stocked fomepazole. So that's kind of where I learned it from. And then when I came here and I found out how expensive it was, I kind of did some research. And I guess in human emergency rooms, the survival is like two to three times higher when they use fomepazole compared to ethanol as an antidote. So I was like, okay, well, that kind of validates why. I want to stock it. But I, just, yeah, I can't I guess, remember the last time in our hospital that yeah. we've actually seen a case. Uh, however, yeah. we probably do go to family vets and other well, emergency clinics. Even here, though, in six years, I've had a few false alarms of people calling. You know, they saw their dog licking something under the car, but it wasn't that. But I've only had one actual positive ethylene glycol test, and it was in a dog that actually it ate some ethylene glycol in a wood stain. They had been staining the fence outdoors, and it rained, and there was some stain on top of the lid, and the rain filled the top of the lid, and the dog drank that, and he was showing neurologic signs. It was a really weird case because he actually also tested positive for THC initially and that test is a lot faster as opposed to the ethylene glycol test which is a blood test and so I got that thinking oh do I even bother checking but then I had the urine first so I checked and there were crystals in the urine I was like oh I better run the test and indeed we spoke to critical care and they had recommended dialysis just to be on the safe side but he didn't have insurance so we weren't able to go with the recommended course of action but we did give him fomepazole and I believe he did fine so um, speaking of toxicities yeah. the much more common one now is THC last night we had eight yeah. patients come in through the ER and four of them were THC well no eight total oh, four, patients four, in the evening four. shift four yeah. of them were THC four were THC yeah. one was it's... combined with magic mushrooms too so oh my god really it's really loaded yeah it's become oh. so common like so you know, it's day like, like cases yeah it's the most common emergency here too for sure um, sometimes I would see three in a single day 
and just in a small town like this. But yeah, to answer your question, I do stock the antidote, but unfortunately right now there are no veterinary after hours emergency services in Whistler because I'm injured and I found a replacement vet, but I actually can't find her any housing. So good luck with that, everybody. Stay away from the antifreeze. That's a perfect example of one that is 100% preventable with proper babysitting. Be prepared for the worst case scenario, have insurance because anytime you're in the hospital getting fomepazole or hemodialysis, it's going to be thousands of dollars. And don't wait too long. If you wait too long, no matter how much money you have, uh, it's game over. You're not and I've had to money. watch dogs die from that as well. So I actually know a, a friend of a friend in high school coming home from a snowboarding trip, picked up a bottle of Gatorade and drank it. And it was actually the driver's like, don't drink that. It's antifreeze. So it happens to be pretty color. Yeah. yeah. And sweet. Yeah.